Welcome to your last set of news to get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite sized piece. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at are we doing the same thing as far as a parabolic run as it has been in the past? So, what we need to do is just to take a look at uh, where we have been to know where we're going. So, we're going to take a look at a little market cap history, take a look at 2017 and 2021, and exactly how they just line up uh, almost perfectly. We'll then take a look at current on-chain analysis to support that. Then a couple of stories about the French bank uh, eating up and gobbling up uh, DeFi projects and also uh, Voyager, the uh, brokerage, some pros and cons. So we'll go over all that stuff, but first take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is Saturday, a beautiful day, and look, market's up, we're doing pretty good. We're at 2.12 trillion, the Bitcoin price is almost at 48,000, I'd like to see that. But the sentiment for Bitcoin today is pretty neutral. And uh, it was crazy because like as things were dropping, it seemed like the bullish sentiment was just was just kind of increasing, increasing, increasing. And now we're here. That's when people are getting cold hands uh, or cold feet. I don't understand. I, I, I think as time goes on and everything starts to uh, conclude, I think we're in the right place at the right time with the right projects. And uh, just take a look at uh, overall gains in the last 24 hours. Yesterday was a great day. Today's uh, not too bad. Look, uh, Bitcoin's up 1%. Ethereum is 4 We're almost at uh, $3,400. Binance coin, wow. The number three spot at 4%. And it looks like they're making a massive run at 430. Cardano's around 226. Tether, nobody cares. Solana now in the sixth spot after jumping up 21% in a seven day average. And uh, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. Uh, as far as like uh, Solana, I'm glad I picked that up. I want to uh, thank two people, Mike the Investor and also James from Invest Answers. Their YouTube channels are in my description and those are the ones that got me uh, into Solana uh, a while back and I've been dollar cost averaging for quite some time. So anyhow, that is what is going on into the market. Let's uh, jump into today's top story. So uh, the first thing, well, not story per se, but it's about market cap. And I was looking at this yesterday, we briefly touched on it and it was the total cryptocurrency market cap. And this includes Bitcoin and every altcoin out there. Now we can kind of, we can scroll down here and we can take a look at what the total crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin, but I really don't care about that. I just don't. What I'm looking for is patterns and I'm looking for what happened before to see what's happening now. Now, past performance does not equate to current results, right? I want to make that crystal clear. I know people have been comparing 2017 to 2021 forever. But I will remind everybody, when I got into crypto in 2017, every, not everybody, but there's a lot of people that were saying that 2013 was an anomaly and we were not going to see that type of parabolic bull run. And guess what happened? It, the exact same thing happened. And everybody's like, well, I guess it did. And then now I hear the exact same thing. Like, well, okay, 2017 was great, but we're not gonna have this parabolic bull run. It's gonna be shifting all over the place. And maybe it will, maybe it will. But here's my question to you. What if it isn't? What if it's the exact same thing? Are you positioned in the right place? Are you doing your due diligence? It's really a question that only you can answer. So when I take a look at crypto market cap, I mean, look, if we just zoom out, look at this horrible market cap. I mean, it's how weak sauce, 780 billion, Ugh, it's nothing. That was on uh, January 5th, 2018. That's when we were just losing our minds. Now look over here, we had a market cap of two point, almost 2.5 trillion. And then of course, we're all complaining because we're at like 1.3 trillion. <laughs> it's amazing to me. So I took a look at that. I took a look at everything and I broke it down because when we want to just, you know, get a big picture, we just zoom out I'm like, oh, okay, everything's cool, right? But what I wanted to take a look at was how everything compared. So I did uh, three little pictures and uh, I took it to it like this. Let me put this up here. So if you take a look at 2016 to 2017, everything was flat on the left-hand side, right? Flat, flat as a board. And then as uh, we get into, uh, this was in 2017 in May, first of all, we had a little spike and then we had a dip. And that was uh, when we had a nothing of 68 billion. That was in May, 2017. Then there was a little spike and there was a dip. And that was, it went down to 67 billion. So lower than it was in May. And everybody was talking about how crypto was dead. It was gonna fall apart. Then we had a spike and then another dip in September and then it kind of went a little, a little spike and then it went parabolic, okay? Let's just try to remember that. That's uh, that's the one I'm pretty much focused on. Now, let's take a look at this year, 2020, 2021. Pretty flat, had some pretty big action, spike, then a big fat dip. 
And uh, we were at 1.4 trillion. Everybody's talking about the, the cycle is over. The bear market is here and we'll never see it again. It's just off. Okay, 1.4 trillion. And then we had a spike. And then we had another dip in July, 1.2 trillion. So again, May, July, and look at then. A spike and then a dip. It's September at 1.8 trillion. It is pretty much mimicking the same thing over here. So if we take that and extrapolate it just a little bit, just take a look at what could be, again, September, not a great month. What happened after that? October, November, December went parabolic. So again, I cannot stress this enough. This does not mean for a fact it's going to happen. But if you look back in 2013, all the way to 2017, and again, in 2017, they said the exact same thing. It wouldn't happen. And yet it did. So uh, here we are sitting on the precipice of what happened. And on October 1st, what do we have? Well, we had a pretty big run up. Got a couple hundred billion just kind of flowed into the market, which is pretty funny. A couple hundred billion uh, flowed in from 2 trillion to almost 2.2 trillion. Remember back here, our dip in May, the entire market was 68 billion. 68 billion and now here we are so just try to remember that when in doubt zoom out i think uh things will uh, be okay so let me know what you think about that in the comments section but uh, i will just finish up with this story with this and that is that if technical analysis is pretty much a self-fulfilling prophecy if enough people talk about it and they believe in it then it seems like ta kind of works out like that i know there's a bunch of ta people will say no nah, that's not true but uh, when you see enough of the charts and enough of the traders, and it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So when we start to see like these types of things, is it a self-fulfilling prophecy? What came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know what's going, wh which way these these things are precisely going, because I'm not Nostradamus, but this is what I truly believe is going to happen. Not investment advice, just investment opinion. So this will be the narrative that I'm going to be with. And I think a lot of people out there uh, in higher positions, much more than me. So... If it is or it isn't, maybe it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. We talk about 2017 and 2021. Oh, we already talked about that. Sorry about that. On-chain analysis. This is where it gets good. On-chain analysis. We like to see what's going on. I mean, TA is great. Fundamental analysis is fantastic. Sentiment analysis is good. But also we want to take a look at what's going on as far as on-chain. So real quick. This is from CryptoQuant, and it was talking about the most active OTC movement since October last year. It states the ratio of all exchanges to total transaction volume on the Bitcoin network is at the lowest level since October last year, and is on a downward trend. Why is that important? Well, as we can see here, tokens are being transferred, and as they're being tra transferred, the fund flow ratio goes down. As they're being transferred around, the price has gone up as things have been going just a little bit as far as like the increase of transferability and the fund flow uh, out of exchanges are going out. So once that happens, we have an increase in price. We've had it again and again and again. Also, we take a look over here, uh, as far as like Bitcoin miners, again, from crypto, crypto quant, we can see that uh, miners aren't selling too much. And then what happens when they don't sell, they hold on to their crypto, now the price goes up. It's amazing how that works out. And then also, my favorite one, all exchange reserves. Uh, this is just for Bitcoin itself. And uh, look at this. This in the in the uh, bluish purplish, uh, that is uh, the actual reserve of what the exchanges have as far as Bitcoin. And it keeps going down because people keep buying it and transferring it off. And then guess what happens? Well, we got the same demand, but not as much supply. All of a sudden, price goes up yet again. And then, of course, let me back up here and show you. And then also, here's another one of my favorites. It's the Ethereum All Exchange Reserve, and it's even more pronounced. Look at this. Uh, from the top left-hand corner, that's a bluish-purplish line. That's the reserves of all the uh, exchanges and what they have as far as Ethereum. See how much it's going down? It's uh, going down uh, mightily, and they don't have much uh, yet at all. And look at the price. Ah, it looks nice. So if we can take a look at some on-chain analysis, look at uh, price and demand, supply and demand, I think we're in the right place at the right time with the right product. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments 
And then let's go on to our second to last piece about Frank, French Bank and DeFi. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Um, it's just, it's something that is in the works. And the reason why I like to talk about these things is because it just shows progression and adoption. It's not so much about this bank's going to offer this tomorrow, but it's banks are getting into it, institutions are getting into it, uh, big name people are getting into it. And that's what we want. We want a lot of people under our umbrella to embrace digital assets and cryptocurrency. So what's going on here? There we go. Third largest bank in France, Societe Generale, proposes use of DeFi protocol MakerDAO. So the, uh, again, French multinational investment bank and financial services company Societe Generale has proceeded to leverage the DeFi protocol MakerDAO. The proposal dubbed Security Tokens Refinancing was published on October 1st. It aims to utilize the DAI stablecoin to refinance a covered bond concept again if you can't beat them join them and that's exactly where all the banks are going they're like look we everybody wants cryptocurrency we know where, the, where, where things are going we do not want to get blockbusters so let's just get on the train before everything just passes us by and i think it's a good idea it just shows mass adoption and then lastly just real quick want to talk to you about uh voyager the pros and the cons so uh this was uh, uh you've probably been seeing a lot of this on twitter crypto twitter if you haven't uh, followed me on uh on twitter there I am at Ad News Asset. Everything I talk about, or a lot of things I talk about, I talk about on Twitter first, kind of flesh things out, see what's going on. And still, it has all the best information. But you've probably been seeing a lot of information about people bragging about uh, all of their uh, yield that they're gaining for just having cryptocurrency, uh, having bought on Voyager and just leaving it there. And I am no exception. So what we have here is I stated this. As the rewards roll in, if you're using the Envoy, uh, Voyager app, there's no reason not to have at least 500 tokens. You get 7% staking, 1 to 3x crypto back rewards. You get a 0.5 to 1.5 earnings reward boost, and you get a withdrawal discount. Now, that's going to come later, but that whole part is uh, still true. And what we got right here, there's my wife, hello, and then we got the Voyager token. I mean, this is just me just having my, my, my Voyager token just staying on there. And this was just two out of the like 30 that I have. Uh, I got 164, just Voyager token. And right now it's about $2.50. So, you know, not too bad for doing Zippo, nothing. And then here's Bat, which I don't really have that much, but whatever else. So, I mean, the pros is, is all right there. And I always say like, if you're gonna use Voyager, might as well have uh, 500. Unfortunately, it's only for Americans. They're still trying to branch out, but that's just one of the parts. Also, the big thing that I think about is if you're going to use Voyager, just use the recurring uh, function. It's super simple to use. I'll show you right now. It's like uh, the easiest thing of all time. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my my phone. So look, so here's everything that uh, that you can buy. You got Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. That's something I don't I don't have. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's say Tron, right? Tron, if I'm going to buy Tron, I'm not going to buy Tron. But if I wanted to buy Tron, I just click this, this button right down here. You can't really see it. It says buy Tron. And then it'll say, how much you want to spend? I want to spend uh, 100 bucks. And then it's going to say up here, set up recurring buy. I just click on that. There's my bank account. I'm going to select the frequency, daily, weekly, monthly. And it just, it just set it and forget it. And then I just put in, again, $100. And if I want to do it down here, it says slide to schedule. And it's already set up. I don't have to think about it. It just comes in. I don't have to keep going back and so on and so forth. So to me, I think it's like it's like a pretty easy thing uh, to use. Now, I will say this. There is a downfall, and these are the cons of, uh, of using Voyager. And that is that out of the 65 different assets that you can use, let me go back. You got everything. That you, I mean, there's a ton of things you want here. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Luna, Atom, VeChain. I mean, all this stuff, right? 65 different crypto assets. Out of those... You only have, you only have uh, 13 that you can take off the platform. Before everybody's like, "Oh, that's I'll never use that because I'm gonna I'm gonna take that off and put it in a cold storage." Sure, you can, but here's the thing. I mean, I the 13 that they have are the ones that I primarily invest in. There's a couple that I don't. Once if you leave it on there, you gain yield, and you just saw how much I get just for doing absolutely nothing. If you don't want to do that, don't use Voyager. Do something else. But if you do, there's a link in the description. Looks something like this. And I'll take you to my handy dandy exchange of wallet fees. And these are all the different uh, wallets and services that I've ever used and ones that I recommend and things that I just uh, do not recommend. So uh, it's all right there. And it, it talks about, uh, you know, if you're able to get loans like in Celsius, it's all right there. And then all the 
uh, commissions and whatnot and uh, everything as far as like yield. So uh, that's it for today. Look, uh, I know it was a little bit uh, long today. That eh, wasn't too long, but uh, there's a lot of things going on. And uh, I will just say this, I still think that uh, the most exciting times are ahead of us. And I think quarter four, like I've been saying for the last, I don't know, year, will be the big fireworks show. And that's what I truly believe. So if uh, you like that type of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this show are time sensitive. And that is it. So uh, I uh, appreciate you coming by and I will see you in the next one. Mm.